All right, today I have a quick tutorial for you on how to use ImageJ for analyzing contact angle measurements of uh, droplets on surfaces. We're going to start um, from the beginning, go to the ImageJ website, go ahead, get a hold of that software, come over here to the download link. It uh, gives you a couple of options for how you can install this. If you already have Java installed on your machine, uh, you can go ahead and download this zip file. I recommend going this route, um, installing Java independently so you can have the most up-to-date version, and then go ahead and, and download this one. Uh, otherwise, like your platform, you know, if you have Windows, go ahead and get the uh, Java bundled with the uh, ImageJ version that you need. Um, then the next thing we're also going to need to grab off that website from the plugins tab is the contact angle measurement software uh, plugin, which is right here. You go ahead and click on that. Uh, gives you a brief description of how to use it and what you might need to know about it. Uh, you can go ahead and download this jar file right here. Your browser might give you a warning uh, for downloading a jar file, but it should be okay. Once you have those things downloaded, you'll have a zip file. Go ahead and unzip that. We'll just do it to the desktop for right now. Uh, and then once that's unzipped, you now have the uh, runtime process right here. Go ahead and run ImageJ for the first time. It'll come up with a little dialog letting you know that it's going to be auto-configured. You say yes. On my machine, the uh, Java Virtual Machine does not have a path yet. So it's giving me a warning telling me to search for the JVM, which is a javaw.exe file. So when that comes up, uh, just navigate to C, Program Files, Java, JRE, Bin, and then you should find the javaw.exe file. Go ahead and select that one. It's now going to tell us that it's going to successfully create a configuration uh, telling it where Java is and then what its memory uh, conditions are. Uh, we can go ahead and click OK, and now we have ImageJ up and running. Uh, first thing we want to do is make sure we allocate a little bit more memory to this process or to the uh, program, because the defaults are not necessarily enough to get anything useful done. Uh, first, check, make sure you get 64-bit listed here. If you don't and you're on a 64-bit architecture, then you're going to run out of space when we try to do this. Um, but we're going to set this to 4 gigabytes of RAM just because these things take, uh, these images can take a lot of memory. So it tells us we need to restart. Uh, and if it doesn't, then we have to delete that CFG file. Close that. And you see the CFG file is right there. You can open up that image, J. Let's see, it looks like we can double check and see that the memory was properly configured. And yeah, comes up, says we got four gigabytes. Everything looks good. We can click here on the tooltip bar. It says four gigabytes are available. So we're good to go there. Uh, next thing we need to do is make sure our contact angle plugin makes it into our plugins directory so we can access that. So we drop this right on into our plugins directory. So now we should be able to start up ImageJ with the EXE. Have our plugin for contact angle listed right there. So now we've got ImageJ all set up. We can go ahead and start collecting some contact angle data. Go ahead and close that file for now. Close that file for now. We have all of our project files listed right here. I'm just going to start at the top of the list. Uh, we've got this particular material with spilled water. Drop that in there. We've opened up ourselves an uh, image of the droplet. Um, so now what you can do is go ahead and start the contact angle plugin. Uh, and what you see here is that the bar has changed. Uh, you now have the option to drop points, move points, delete points. Then it has a menu and to exit the contact angle plugin. So go ahead, take a click on one point and then the other point where the baseline uh, would cut through that droplet. And then we add five drops or five points around that droplet surface so that it can run its best fit routine. Then we go ahead and click on the menu button there and it brings up this menu option we're going to do is run the manual points procedure goes ahead and does that 
be it has its fitting here. So it drew a line through our two points, fit a best fit circle and ellipse, and then drew tangent lines at the contact angle three phase point. When it does that, it goes ahead and provides us with the breakdown in the results window. We can see uh, the data that we're really interested in is either theta C or theta E, uh, depending on whether we're going with the elliptical or circular fit. Uh, once we're done with that, click this button here to make sure that we exit out of the contact angle plugin before we start loading the next image. Otherwise, we'll run into some Click that, comes up, says that we want to go back. We say done, and here we are back at the normal window. So we could save this. I normally don't. Um, and then we can either, if your files are labeled sequentially, you can just click open next, and we'll go from DI Water 0001 to DI Water 0002. So you just repeat the process until we're done. Um, so again, it's important to get that three phase point right where it's making contact with the surface. If there's any issues, you can move the drop around or delete the drop. Go ahead and add our points. Right, and then we run the menu, bring up the points list, run that manual points procedure, and again we get a contact angle. It looks like this surface wasn't exactly level, so we've got some variation in that contact, um, but uh, the circle fits are consistent. We might go ahead and use the circle fits here. I'm not so excited about those uh, elliptical fits. We'll just see how this all turns out. Anyway, don't forget to exit the contact angle plugin. And uh, that's basically the long and the short of it. Um, when we're done, don't forget to save those results uh, as an Excel file so we can be sure we can process those and get some useful surface energies out of uh, this program. All right, I hope that's been enough. Any questions or comments, definitely get back in touch with me. I'll, I'll let you know what, what you're missing or what you need to do. Thanks.